Hey guys, in this one, I wanna talk about a number of cryptocurrencies that could have massive potential for this year. Some really exciting projects that could actually do really well. I'll be highlighting why these coins really stand out for me from a technical perspective, all the technologies behind them, the sector that they're in, and the reasons why they're making the list. Make sure to check out the video description for more useful info and the timestamps for this video so you can scrub between the coins that I'm discussing. If you're new to buying cryptocurrencies, you can buy them on exchanges like Binance and Kraken, which I will link below for you. And you can also hold them and buy them in a service like Coinbase, which I will also link below. So let's start with Theta. And this is an interesting project for me because they are aiming to decentralize video streaming. That is quite apt considering that you're watching this video on YouTube, which is a centralized marketplace for video content. Now, Theta is quite unique. And from what I understand, it's the only project in the space giving us true end-to-end -end decentralized video streaming. Theta is actually a protocol that will allow for dApps or decentralized applications to be built on top of it. Now, if you don't know what dApps are, they're essentially apps built on top of the blockchain and allow for decentralized access. So that means that nobody actually owns them or the servers that they run on as they run on the blockchain, which is obviously a larger network. Privacy and resistance to censorship is a positive of this. That can also be seen as a negative if obviously illegal nefarious actors can maybe use the platform for something fairly illegal. But getting off that topic anyway, Theta could actually allow for dApps to be built on top that could allow for streaming of esports, gambling, TV shows, and many other visual media. Theta is trying to solve many challenges when it comes to streaming content. So Theta tokens can act as an incentive to encourage users to share their unused bandwidth resources to speed up the networks. What's really interesting though is that content producers on the platform could actually get rewarded in a more transparent way thanks to the trustless system. So there wouldn't be a huge difference in what some people get paid versus others due to backroom deals and very opaque contracts and payment systems. So anyone could go on, essentially be completely free to use that system and contracts and advertising on the system could be far more fairly distributed. This project has two tokens, Theta tokens and T-Fuel. Theta tokens are actually limited. There is only 1 billion of them and there will never be an increase in those. If you stake your coins, you'll be given T-Fuel, which is essentially uh, payment gas fees for the smart contracts. Theta is currently valued at $2.2 billion and it's trading near all time highs right now. Hedrick is an interesting play in the DeFi space. So having a professional background trading on a stock exchange, the DeFi space for me is something that interests me a lot. Now, DeFi stands for decentralized finance. It's really a term for a variety of financial applications in cryptocurrency or on the blockchain, aiming to disrupt the typical financial intermediaries like banks and brokerages. As decentralized finance or DeFi actually grows large, it becomes even more interesting, but for right now, it is not without its problems. Hedrick anyway allows for options contracts to be agreed upon between two parties. Now, options contracts are an agreement between two parties that agree a price now for the potential sale of purchase of something in the future. Options and futures create immense liquidity in the financial system and they're used every single day to lock in prices of oil and gold and other commodities. But obviously on the blockchain with these contracts that you can have, something like an options contract is not going to change too much when it is executed. And so this is a very basic use of the blockchain that actually has some potential. So let's say I thought the price of Bitcoin were to rise to $50,000 by the end of this year. I could buy call options for Bitcoin. Obviously, the other person on the end thinks that that probably won't happen. If Bitcoin prices do rise, though, I can either sell the call option for a higher price. That means I make money or I can just simply proceed to actually execute that option and buy Bitcoin from the seller. Hedgic allows users to trade options in a completely decentralized way. It's like a marketplace for options. So you and the other market participant have a direct contract between you on the blockchain, meaning that banks and other futures exchanges and option, options exchanges just aren't needed. Hedgic currently has a market cap of around 80 million, which really makes it a kind of mid or small cap player in the space. And DeFi or decentralized finance still has significant hurdles to overcome with security and scalability. Also bugs in the code are still common. 
There are also other players in the space, like Injective Protocol, who you might want to look into. But smart contracts on the blockchain really seem custom made for options contracts because they are a direct contract between you and someone else that really doesn't change until the expiry. Next, I wanna talk about Coin, and this is a decentralized exchange, also known as a DEX. Coin is a peer-to-peer cross-chain decentralized cryptocurrency wallet and exchange powered by Atomic Swaps, which sounds super complex, but essentially it is just an exchange for people to go and buy and sell cryptocurrencies. On the surface, Coin is just another crypto exchange. We already have lots of these like Binance or even Coinbase. The thing is though, both Binance and Coinbase are centralized exchanges and you also do have to give some KYC information if you want to purchase some cryptocurrencies on their systems. Coin also does have something further. Coin is still in the early stages, but essentially Coin focuses on cross-chain compatibility. Now, if you've traded cryptocurrencies for a while, you know that transferring a crypto from one wallet to another can be quite difficult. You have to make sure that you have the correct protocols. And for most consumers who really don't know too much about the industry and want to, just an easy way of doing things, making things consumer friendly is really the only way to encourage mass adoption of this. Coin is trying to simplify this whole process though. So the ability to send one currency and receive another currency. So I could send you Ethereum and you could actually receive Bitcoin using Coin. If we look here as well, you can see it is truly decentralized and non-custodial, meaning only you have access to your funds. No KYC information is required, which is also a hurdle for a lot of people that are maybe getting into this and want to start with trading or buying cryptocurrencies, but really don't want to give their personal information and their ID cards. For most normal people though, I still feel that Binance and Coinbase are just consumer friendly options that most people will have no issue with. But what I like about Coin is that they're not really trying to disrupt this space, but be more of a player within it, maybe linking up with Binance and other exchanges as well to offer these services. So that's why it may actually have a bright future. Next we have Monero. It's a privacy centric cryptocurrency based on the CryptoNote protocol. It has one of the most advanced cryptography protocols out there and allows for anonymous peer-to-peer -peer digital payments. Monero cryptography really ensures that all of the payments on this system are completely and utterly untraceable. When you send funds using Monero, you actually send them to a new destination that only you and the recipient can recognize. So your transaction address isn't recorded in the public record. Monero has though been in the news recently with many government agencies really not liking this because truly this is a completely anonymous way of sending payments and a lot of government agencies don't like that. Having a truly anonymous payment system of course creates a big headache for those who wish to control the system. This means that legal action has also been threatened against Monero and this type of crypto and its technology, which is of course a serious downside risk and a con for this project. Considering how much the authorities actually hate this coin and the fact that up until now, the cryptography hasn't really been cracked, I think it's a sign that this technology is actually very robust and obviously works. There's also some pressure from centralized exchanges to not support this crypto, but there should always be a market for XMR, which is the ticker for Monero, as it is very popular and has some of the highest liquidity of any of the privacy coins. Current market cap is two and a half billion with a price of about $136 per coin. This list is by no means exhaustive, so more coins will be discussed in future videos. Consider subscribing if you wanna see those. If you wanna go ahead and buy cryptocurrencies, these services I use will be listed in the description for you, along with some other materials and videos that may be helpful. Thank you for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one.